Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to look at a variant healing potion macro for Roll20, no API required. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Rules is written in D&D 5e, drinking a potion is a standard action. But a lot of DMs, myself included, will house rule that drinking a potion is a bonus action. Recently, I was playing in a game where the DM said, okay, you can drink a healing potion as an action or as a bonus action, but if you drink it as an action, it's going to heal the full possible amount that that potion could restore. Whereas, if you drink it as a bonus action, then you have to roll the dice to see how many hit points that you'd regain. And I thought this was really cool because now it introduces a little bit more thought into what you're going to do on your turn. You know, do I want to take the bonus action and roll the 2d4 plus 2 to maybe recover a decent amount of hit points? Or do I want to spend my whole action drinking that potion and guarantee that I'm going to get back 10 hit points? So what we're going to do today is create a macro that will allow you to choose whether you're using a bonus action or a full action to drink the potion then choose which type of healing potion you're drinking, and then we'll either roll the dice or tell you the appropriate amount of healing that's been restored. Now, I've actually walked through how to build a healing potion macro in a previous video, which I'll pop a card to up in the top right of the screen. This is that macro that you're looking at right now, and basically, if we were to copy and paste this into Roll20 and just run it, you can see it's going to prompt us, okay, what kind of healing potion are we using? Let's say that we're using a greater healing potion. We'll submit that. And we get this little bit here saying that a greater healing potion was used. And then we see that we rolled 4d4 plus 4. And that's great. But if instead we wanted our macro to restore the maximum amount of health, what we do is we would just copy this. We'll paste it. And then we would change the values in the brackets here. So for a regular healing potion... Instead of it being 2d4 plus 2, we would just say 10. And then for a greater healing potion, it wouldn't be 4d4 plus 4, it would be 20. And as you can see, I've gone in and filled in that it would be 40 for a superior and 60 for a supreme. So now if we were to copy this and run it, you can see just like before, it's prompting us to select what kind of potion we're doing. Let's do a greater one again. We'll submit that. And this time around, it tells us that the greater healing potion was used and we just have 20 hit points restored. Now one important safety tip to note here is that the code for both of these macros is actually all on one single line. I'm letting it wrap naturally as I've been typing, but if I were to turn word wrap off in my editor, you'll see that both of these commands are all on a single line. So if you're running these or writing them yourself and you're running into trouble where things just don't seem to be working properly, check and make sure that you don't actually have an extra line return somewhere in there because that will prevent this from running successfully. So now that we have the ability to roll the dice for the healing potion or to just have the maximized amount of health restored, what we need to do is put it into that purple box and have it tell us which kind of potion was used and how many hit points were recovered. So effectively what we're going to do is put a query inside another query. So ask the user, are you doing a full action or a bonus action? And then ask them, are you doing a regular healing potion or a greater healing potion or whatever? And roll the appropriate amount of dice or display the maximized amount of healing for whichever potion they selected. However, there are a couple of quirks about Roll20 syntax that we need to be aware of when we nest queries like this. So just for simple illustrative purposes, I've made another query real quick here. And you can see it's saying make a choice, first choice or second choice. So if I ran this right now in Roll20, we'd see make a choice. And I have two options, first choice, second choice, and whichever one I have shows up. Great. But now if I want to make nested choices... What I would do is come into first choice, put in a comma, and then I'd put in my sub choice. So I would say something like this, where I put in a sub choice that says, all right, we're going to select first choice, and then we would choose either sub choice A or sub choice B, right? But if I run this right as it is right now, you're going to see we have make a choice, and then it says first choice, sub choice A, sub choice B. And second choice doesn't show up in here. So this is not the behavior I want. So what's going on with that? 
Well, what's happening is when Roll20 is reading this, it sees, okay, this is the start of the query right here, this open curly brace. As soon as it encounters a closing curly brace, no matter where it is in the line, it says, oh, okay, that's the end of it right there. So what's happening is it's treating this as the end of the query and this stuff after that closing curly brace is just ignored and that's not the behavior we want. So what we need to do is look at our subquery here and we need to replace any closing curly braces with an HTML code. Similarly, we also need to replace any pipes in the subquery with their corresponding HTML code. And if our sub choices have commas in them where we do something else, say roll 44 plus four, then we need to put in the HTML code for the comma as well. So there's a bunch of substitutions we need to do in order for the nested query to work successfully. So the replacement code for the pipe, let's do those first. That is this value right here, this ampersand hash one, two, four semicolon. So we're gonna replace both our pipes with that. And we're only replacing them inside the subquery, remember. So I don't need to do this one out here in my main query or up here either. So I'm just doing it within the subquery, just this piece right here. And then we're also going to replace for the comma and the commas replacement value is this right here, ampersand hash 44 semicolon. And then finally we need to replace this closing curly brace right here. And the code for that is ampersand hash 125 semicolon. So now if we copy this whole thing and run it, you'll see we have make a choice there's our first choice and our second choice. All right, let's do first choice, submit. And now we have sub choice and sub choice B. I'm gonna choose sub choice, submit. And you see it rolled the 44 plus four that we had in the subquery. So now all we need to do is make those same substitutions in the healing potion queries we were working on earlier because those are effectively going to become subqueries in the main macro that we're building. So basically all I'm gonna do is a find and replace in those original macros. And I'm going to find, let's do the pipe character first, find the pipe and replace it with the HTML code for the pipe. We'll say replace all. Then we're going to find the comma and we'll replace it with the commas HTML code. And then we'll do the closing curly brace and replace it with its corresponding code. So at the end, our code looks something like this. So now let's start building the macro that's gonna give us this purple box output up here. So for that, we're gonna use the standard roll 20 template, and that's gonna start like this, this template default, and then name equals healing potion, that gives us the header here. And now we wanna put in our main query, which is asking the player if they're drinking this as a bonus action or as a full action. So we're gonna do that with another query like this. We're gonna have the query action type, and then it'll be a bonus or full. So now what we do is we take the code that we've written earlier and we put it in our main query. So it'll be bonus, comma, and then this code that we made that rolls the dice for the amount of healing that they get. So I'm just gonna cut that and paste it right here. And then for the full, it'll be the same thing, comma, and then this code right here. Cut that and paste it in. And so now let's copy this whole thing and paste it into roll 20. And we can see action type, we have bonus or full. So let's choose bonus, submit. Then we have our four different types of potions. Let's choose superior here, submit. And we can see superior healing potion was used and we rolled the dice. If I paste this in again, and choose full action. And let's say we we're gonna do a greater healing potion this time. We can see that 20 hit points were recovered. So there you have it, a macro that rolls healing dice if you're drinking a potion as a bonus action or to just display the full amount of health that you're recovering if you're drinking as a full action. And if you are going to use this in your games, please let me know how it goes down in the comments. But I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Until next time, folks, have a great day.